This is Robert Marglacci, the Mindshare Learning Port, Canada's Learning and Technology e-magazine, and welcome to This Week in Canadian EdTech. I'm honoured to have joined me for a Mindshare Learning Moment. Rob Canoni, the Pathways and Careers teacher at York Catholic District School Board in York Region, and past winner of the Classroom of the Future Challenge. Rob, thank you for joining me today. Robert, thank you for having me. I'm honoured. Well, I hope you and your family are well during this COVID-19 period. Yeah, we've been, uh, we've been keeping busy. I um, go back and forth from my own home to uh, see my mom occasionally, um, but we've all been good. How have you been? Yeah, our family's well. We're all co-working at home. Um, and I'm actually here in my co-working space today, which I really miss and where it's about the future of work and learning. And perhaps we can talk about that. Uh, You've got uh, a new role as the Pathways and Careers teacher. And, uh, you know, how is the year going? How are you adapting uh, in your role? How is the, how is your Blessed Trinity was a school you were at? How are, how are they you're adapting as well? You keep in touch with some of your colleagues uh, at yeah, the school? I certainly do. So we saw each other last at Blessed Trinity, and I think May uh, when you came by. Um, right. And since then, I, as you said, I transitioned uh, to become a Pathways and Careers teacher where I support intermediate students in grade seven and eight, uh, a handful of them at eight schools in Richmond Hill. And I support them with uh, essentially, as the role suggests, um, helping them with um, their futures uh, and helping them with choices they have to make as they prepare to transition to high school. Um, and Blessed Trinity, they're doing great. Um, th those teachers are phenomenal at that school and, and they're all doing well, keeping, uh, keeping their students engaged and uh, yeah, trying to stay positive. And what was, uh, let's reflect for a moment on, on the challenge, what inspired you to submit your, to the video challenge contest and, and the impact it had on, on yourself and your colleagues and the students. Yeah, certainly. So, um, what prompted us to enter the contest was um, the school at the time had been transitioning into um, using different spaces that were unoccupied and transforming those spaces into more student-centered spaces. So one area would, uh, was a calming room that they wanted to turn into a grocery store for the uh, students with special needs. Uh, and then the library had just undergone a major transformation. So we thought to also address how we can um, sort of add technology in that library uh, in addition to, you know, the space had been set up beautifully, but what technology could we have in that, in that uh, library to help the students? So that's what prompted us to enter, uh, and they've used the technology since then, thanks to your wonderful partnership with, uh, I know, Dell, Logics Academy, just to name a couple, but um, the students have used it, uh, and unfortunately for me, I haven't been able to see them in action using it, but I see snippets of them using it on Twitter, and I'm, I'm grateful. Fantastic. Now, in terms of your personal uh, career development and professional learning, it kind of opened things up a little bit for you. You're a, a true lifelong learner. I'd love to see you connecting with other peers uh, in professional learning beyond York region and, and across Canada and beyond. Isn't it uh, amazing what Twitter and social media tools can do for you? Absolutely, you know, that's how I connected with you and I learned about uh, Mindshare Learn uh, and Mindshare Learning through uh, Zelia Capitao, who had right, one of our board members, yeah. Before. She's awesome. And past yeah, winner. So learned, yeah, past winner. And she recommended also that uh, we apply. Um, so yeah, it's great how we can connect with so many people and learn, learn from each other on Twitter. I, I'm fascinated by uh, your uh, career trajectory as a radio and television graduate from Ryerson, and you actually were a reporter with Rogers uh, for a period of time. But let's reflect on that and the impact. Uh, it's, I'm fascinated by the fact that you went into teaching because it brings a different lens and perspective in, in working with kids. And I know the kids get a kick out of uh, searching you on YouTube, uh, apparently. <laughs> Come up with yeah, some old footage. They They're hilarious, Robert. You know, I, I went into one of my Pathways classes uh, in February and they're like, sir, you're a reporter and you were a reporter. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, okay, I don't like to start with that. Um, but I end up telling them and you know, what I've discovered that, that there's a lesson in there uh, in that, you know, it, it's good to uh, realize many pathways for yourself and not just one. And uh, as you said earlier, you know, it helps 
you know, the things that you learn in a previous uh, pathway that you've been in uh, or occupation can really complement and help you in, in current, your current role. So I've, I've learned a great deal from reporting and communicating and interviewing others and getting to the heart of the matter and finding the truth and producing broadcasts that I'm like, I've been able to bring those skills into my current role. And uh, sometimes I don't realize it, which is fascinating, right. but like, oh, wait a minute. I'm like, this is what we're doing. Right. Uh, so it's helped. Yeah. And, and, and that explains your tech savviness uh, when it comes to uh, infusing uh, tech infused pedagogy yeah. in the classroom. No, I, I'm really eager about that. Yeah. So what are kids uh, thinking they want to do when they, when they grow up these days uh, in grade seven and eight? I'm sure you, you, you must come across some really interesting career options you're considering. Yeah, you know what? When we, that's a great question because when we end up um, going through an activity where they search careers and find mm -hmm. out you know, what's required. Um, they often search for, and they can't find it because it's not under this. They're like, YouTuber. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, okay, maybe you want to look yeah. into a producer or a video editor. Um, so yeah, many of them uh, enjoy the arts. Um, of course, there's uh, different trajectories. They, they often search for lawyer. That's a big one. There right. was a list that I can't recall right now, but the arts was up there. Uh, law, um, medicine. Um, yeah, but arts and law rank high. Interesting. And so I have a friend who uh, my kids played hockey with in Vaughn, and uh, their brother went to McGill, graduates, and uh, he tells us that I'm going to become a YouTuber. And he did. Uh, he, he is wow. very successful. Uh, um, Anthony DeLuca is his name. Okay. You can Google him. And uh, Anthony is, you know, he does product reviews. He's big on the fashion and hair. He's got great hair compared to me. But, uh, but you know what? It's, it, it can be a career pathway. If, mm -hmm. You know, what I, what I say to startups, you know, when someone has an idea, I say, you know, if you're passionate and you do your homework, and you develop a concise plan, and you execute with passion, you could be successful, right? When I had this vision of doing my, creating this co-working space, the Mindshare Workspace, in a shopping mall, which has never been done, my, my, my wife, my kids all thought it was crazy. And now, three years later, they think, oh, that wasn't such a bad idea after all. We really supported you, didn't we? Not right. up front. I had to do my business plan pitch to them and really convince them. But when, when, when someone's not sold on your idea, it means you need to do your homework a little better and really uh, hone your, your, your storytelling or your pitch. Because it is about storytelling, isn't it? Everything Dude. you do today. Yeah, it's about storytelling and it's also about being authentic, being your authentic right. self. And I think people pick up on that, especially if you want to get into uh, being someone who's on display via the YouTube context. And what I tell those students is, that's great. Like, I want to support you. Uh, I, I know you have the potential to do that. But I also tell them to explore another pathway, right? Just in case that doesn't work out. And it's not so much a backup. It's what are you equally as passionate about? Because you can be equally as passionate about being a chef or, you know, uh, doing something else. So I always encourage students to look at more than one pathway, not as a backup, but just to be mindful that you can do more than one thing in life. Great advice, Rob. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time today. And just as a heads up, we pivoted with the Schools of the Future Challenge. Uh, and in light of COVID-19, we're going to make it a COVID contest to share success stories and uh, best practices around remote learning and how uh, teachers and students collaborated in an innovative ways. So I hope you'll, you'll share that. What do you think of the concept? I think, you know what, Robert, there's no better a time uh, than to continue with that now because I've seen schools pivot and especially in our York Catholic board, our leaders and our teachers are exceptional at offering engaging challenges, at promoting and fostering that community spirit. So I think you're going to have a lot of participants. It's going to be quite the challenge. That's awesome. Will you share, will you share it amongst your uh, peer group? Absolutely, I will. I appreciate that so much. Thank you again, Rob. Thank you so much, Rob.
That was Rob Canone, Pathways and Careers teacher at the York Catholic District School Board. My name is Robert Murdlach in the Mindshare Learning Report. Be sure to check out WW Mindshare Learning to get your latest issue. And until next time, stay healthy, stay safe, and keep the learning curve steep.